This is a case of a patient who presented with a submandibular region mass. When you look at the CT scan through the head and neck region, you see that we have a very large mass which appears to extend below the level of the mandible, hence it was felt to be a submandibular mass. What you see here is the submandibular gland. So this was not a submandibular mass that was within the submandibular gland, but a mass that's posterior to the submandibular gland, and in point of fact, extends all the way up into the parotid gland. You notice that the lesion has cystic components, as well as solid components, and not only that, but you see some subcutaneous spread into the platysma muscle on the right side, as well as the subcutaneous fat. So this is a very large lesion with irregular borders spread to the platysma muscle, spread into the subcutaneous fat, is one that we would suggest represents a malignancy, even though it does have some cystic component. Now, is this cystic or is this necrotic? Looks a little bit more necrotic based on the border here. Pay attention as I scroll superiorly. What do you see? Well, I see some component which is appearing to go into the deep lobe or deep portion of the parotid gland. And I see tissue which is extending from the parotid gland posteriorly to the stylomastoid foramen. This area should have nice clean fat and instead we have this heterogeneous swath of tissue extending to the stylomastoid foramen. This is a marker for potential spread to the facial nerve via perineural spread. Mucoepidermoid carcinomas generally ha have a low rate of perineural spread, but this is an example of one that did spread in that fashion. Let's look at the coronal and sagittal images and see whether we're convinced. Well, it's pretty easy to convince yourself that this is a lesion of the parotid gland given that it's in close apposition thereof. Here is the submandibular gland being displaced downward. We see this haziness even to the sternocleidomastoid muscle and the adjacent subcutaneous fat. And as we watch it go further uh, superiorly, we, uh, we see this tissue that is going right to the stylomastoid foramen here, this irregular tissue. Here's the clean stylomastoid foramen. This may be more or less convincing on the sagittal scan. So on this sagittal scan, we got this big old mass in the parotid gland with irregular borders, subcutaneous fat infiltration. And as we come to the um, superior border of it, we see that it goes to the edge of the stylomastoid foramen on the sagittal scan as well. So this was a mucoepidermoid carcinoma, in this case, high-grade mucoepidermoid carcinoma, which has a uh, potential for poor prognosis. You're going to look for lymphadenopathy. We see lymph nodes here that are enlarged. Patient has some large lymph nodes on the contralateral side. We probably deserves getting a PET scan to see how many of these are actually infiltrated with tumor, particularly if it's a high-grade mucoepidermoid carcinoma.